make sure you're familiar with these terms before beginning this video. Hello, and welcome back. It's me, Mr. Kennedy, here to introduce you to another chapter of Stern's World Civilizations. Today, we're going to talk about Chapter 30, The Consolidation of Latin America. Let's hit it. This chapter is a ride on the bumpy roller coaster of Latin American independence and development from around 1810 to 1920. There's a lot of information here, but this is one of the more interesting and lesser known sections of world history. First, I'll refresh your memory on some important background, then give you a quick framework of this long period, and end with some themes that connect this chapter to the rest of the world at this time. Okay, first, Send your mind back to the conquest of the Americas by the Spanish and Portuguese. The British, Dutch, and French were there too, but only in cold, lonely, poor North America. We're focused on Latin America, the Caribbean, South America, and Central America. Remember that before the Europeans showed up, there were a few thriving civilizations, like the Incas and Aztecs, and many more smaller kingdoms. In one of history's great tragedies, the vast majority of these people were killed by disease, murder, and slavery. Their land was stolen, and the silver, sugar, and other raw materials that came from their land enriched European conquerors. In the years after conquest, millions of African slaves were brought to the New World, many of them in the Caribbean and Brazil. Along with Indians and Europeans, they mixed and intermarried, creating the complex social system called Sociedad de las Castas, with Creoles, American-born Europeans, on top, Mestizos and Mulatos, people of mixed birth, next, and Indians and Africans on the bottom. Most Africans, in fact, remain slaves. That just about brings us up to the start of the chapter. By 1800, Latin Americans had read the Enlightenment thinkers, followed the American and French revolutions, and watched the Haitian slave revolution. When, in 1808, Spain and Portugal were wrapped in the crisis of invasion, their colonies seized the opportunity. In the 20 years after Paraguay's independence in 1813, almost all of Latin America had declared independence. In the next 100 years, the Latin American republics experienced mixed results. The text discusses the political, social, and economic changes of that century in detail, but I'll just give a quick overview. Politically, most former colonies wrote constitutions establishing republics, but practically, most were ruled autocratically by some form of dictator. Slavery was abolished everywhere except Brazil fairly quickly, but otherwise, social systems remained the same. Economically, the new republics started off weakly but by the end of the century had established themselves as strong export economies. Once again, I'd like to highlight some key ideas before I finish up. First of all, while industrialization, and especially industrial technology like steamboats and telegraphs, helped Europeans capture and control colonies elsewhere, the new Latin American republics managed to harness those same technologies to their own advantage. Second, international politics changed substantially in Latin America in this period. Spain and Portugal were still the dominant powers in 1800, but Britain, and later the United States, eventually became main economic and political partners. In all three cases, however, relations tended to benefit the foreign partner, and Latin America never managed to achieve economic or political parity. As you read the chapter, think about how Latin America fits into the rest of the story we've told so far about the spread of industrialization Some. and the Atlantic revolutions. That's it for chapter 30. I'll see you next week for chapter 31, where we'll study how some of the most powerful states of the 1700s faced the growing European threat.